Hello my good people, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. We have come again with Mazin Namdekano's news. Please don't wear Mazin Namdekano in the dustbin. No matter what is going on, no matter the detention and the time spent in illegal detention. So Mazin still keeps his head very straight, looking up to God for intervention, looking up that Biafra will come. He does not give up this hope. So now, I want to read what happened. He sued British House of Lords. He sued them. He petitioned them, keeping heads straight. Let me read. He said, the detained leader of indigenous people of Biafra Mazenam Dekano has petitioned the British House of Lords for urgent intervention in his detention and case with Nigerian government. Kano, who possesses dual citizenship as a Nigerian and a Britain, wrote the petition through his special counsel barrister Aloy Ejimako, describing himself as a political activist who is advocating for self-determination for the people of Biafra Nation in the southeastern Nigeria, southeastern region of Nigeria. Kano, in the petition dated January 18, 2024, said that IPOP is registered as a legal entity in the United Kingdom and has numerous offices and chapters, chapters around the world. He noted that the group, which was proscribed as a terrorist organization by former President Mahmoud Buhari's government, operates in the open as a non-violent group. The IPOP leader recounted how his ordeal started in October 2015. When he was arrested in Lagos, Nigeria, a few days after he arrived from London and was subsequently charged with the treasonable offences, stemming solemnly from his pro Biafra broadcast on Radio Biafra from its location in London. Kano also recalled how, from September 10 to 14, 2017, Nigerian security forces led by the army attacked his home. The petition reads, The security forces used live bullets and other lethal munition, and several people, including Mr. Kano, his parents, non now late, his siblings, children, women, the elderly, and numerous visitors were at the said home with Mazen Namde Kano during the attack. At the end of the attack, Mr. Kano's home was badly damaged. Dozens of people were killed, many were wounded and maimed, and the security forces captured several people alive and disappeared them to the unknown location to this day. In January 2022, a high court in Nigeria declared the military attack at Mr. Kano's residence as unconstitutional and a breach of his fundamental right and awarded him substantial monetary damages. In March 2018, the African Commission on Human Rights on Human and People's Rights, ACHPR, issued an interim decision holding that the military attacks on Mazinam de Kanu, the contemporaneous uh, prescription of IPOB, violated the African Charter, and accordingly, this ACHPR wrote the former president of Nigeria to remedy the situation, but the GON never implemented the provisional measure to this day. According to the petition, as a direct consequence of the said military invasion and the nationwide manhunt for him, Mr. Kano was compelled to flee Nigeria in search of ref refuge and to save his life. He said, in the course of his involuntary exile, Mr. Kano, on 12th of May 2021, entered the Republic of Kenya as a British subject and was legally admitted on his British passport. After his admission, he settled in at a tem temporary location in Nairobi, Kenya, after failing in the objective of the killing 
after failing in the objective of killing Mr. Kano during the September September 2017 military operation against him and being aware that he had taken refuge in Kenya, security forces of the GON hotly pursued Mr. Kano to Kenya and laid in wait and ambushed him. On June 19, 2021, Mr. Kano drove himself to Jomo, Kenyatta, International Airport, Nairobi, Kenya, on a personal errand. As soon as he pulled to a stop at the parking lot and alighted from his vehicle, several armed security agents working for GON violently accosted and abducted him, handcuffed him, blindfolded him, bundled him in a vehicle, and speed away. The abductors took him to a non-described private house, not a police station or other official location somewhere in Nairobi, Kenya, and chained him to the floor. Mr. Kano was not shown any Kenyan arrest warrant or extradition warrant, nor was he informed of the existence of any such warrant. His abductors took turn beating him and torturing him, touting him and verbally degraded him. He remained chained to the floor for eight days, was not allowed to bath, was fed bland, uh, bland bread once a day and given non-sanitary water to drink. He was not taken before a Kenyan court or even a Kenyan police station or other official law enforcement facility or even allowed a phone call. He was later flown to Nigeria from Kenya. According to the petition, Khan was on June 29, 2021, secretly arraigned and without benefit of his counsel of record before a federal high court in Abuja. The petition said the court wrongfully ordered him detained with secret police, that is state security services, instead of a prison facility, which is a clear violation of the provision of the Nigerian Prison Act, the Administration of Criminal Justice Act, and the provision of the Nigerian Constitution on right to counsel. The petition noted that in October 2023, a high court in Nigeria declared as unconstitutional executive actions of the Nigerian government in the proscription of IPOB and its declaration as a terrorist group. It said the court awarded significant damages against the GON and ordered it to apologize to Mr. Kano. On 13th October 2022, Nigerian's Court of Appeal delivered a judgment ruling that the mode of transferring Mr. Kano from Kenya to Nigeria amounted to extraordinary rendition. Accordingly, the court discharged Mr. Kano from all criminal charges pending against him. On 15th of December 2023, the Nigerian Supreme Court remitted Mr. Kano's case back to the originating High Court to consider the charges who stand against him. However, the Apex Court strongly condemned both the said military attack against Mr. Kano and his extraordinary rendition. Till date, however, the case file is yet to be transmitted to the High Court and the said judgment of the remittal is yet to be enrolled and certified, thus leading to a situation where Mr. Kano remains in limbo without any clear prospects of ever being brought to trial since his saga being almost nine years ago in 2015. The petition pointed out that Mr. Kano is gravely ill with three life-threatening conditions, namely serious heart condition, hypertension, and low potassium levels. It said, all these serious conditions demand specialists 
medical care and intervention that are not available at the facility where he is being detained or even in Nigeria as a whole. And the GON fully aware of this. In view of the foregoing, we hereby most respectfully present the following prayers to the consideration of the House of Lords urgently intervene with His Majesty's government, strongly urging it to promptly make demands on GON to unconditionally release Mr. Kano from detention and repatriate him to the United Kingdom or to levy sanction against the GON if it fails to comply within a reasonable time. It is pertinent to stress the point that extraordinary rendition inherently destroys every prospect for a fair trial in the jurisdiction that levied the rendition. The UK court have held in a plethora of cases that extraordinary rendition creates a barrier to the trial of a suspect. This was precisely the reason the United Kingdom had in 1984 denied Nigerian former application to extradite Omar Odiko after his aborted extraordinary rendition from the UK. In our humble view, Mr. Kano is no different except that his case bears more equities because he is British nationality as compared to Mr. Diko who was not a British citizen. Additionally, extraordinary rendition is by itself a form of torture that should shock the conscience of the parliament, especially when considered together with the actual physical torture levied on Mr. Kanu by agents of the GON in Kenya and the solitary confinement to which Mr. Kanu had been subjected to in Nigeria since June 2021. It is settled that torturing a British citizen overseas triggers the universal criminal jurisdiction of British courts. In alternative to above, your lordships are prayed to promptly intervene with His Majesty's government, strongly urging it to make binding proposals to the GON to agree to conduct Mr. Kano's trial in the United Kingdom. In addition to the fact that all the charges levied against Mr. Kano by the GON are alleged to have been committed by him from British soil, there are other legal reasons why Mr. Kano should be tried in the UK rather than Nigeria. Kano stated that his reason for calling the British House of Lords for intervention, including nationality and citizenship. Mr. Kano is a dual citizen of Nigeria and the United Kingdom. As a British citizen, he has the right to seek legal protection from the UK government, which includes demanding that UK be the venue for his trial. Human rights concerns. There are genuine concerns about the human rights situation and the treatment of defendants in Nigeria. Give Mr. Kano's British citizenship. Given Mr. Kano's British citizenship, he would be more likely to receive a fair trial and be treated in accordance with the international human rights human rights standard. If the U if the trials is held in the UK. Diplomatic considerations, the UK and Nigeria have a history of good diplomatic relations. Thus, the UK should have an interest in ensuring that one of its citizens receive fair treatment in a criminal trial, not conducted in Nigeria but in UK. Security and safety. We have real concerns about the security and safety of Mr. Kano, including particularly potential threats to his life in Nigeria, evidenced by GON's military operation against Kano in 2017. 
the extraordinary rendition in 2021, the physical torture in Kenya, and the persistent solitary confinement in Nigeria. Fair trial political interference. There are concerns about political interference in the legal process in Nigeria. A trial in the UK should mitigate this concern as well as to ensure the legal proceedings are fair and free from undue political influence. There is also every likelihood, as he happened before, as has happened before, that the GON will not abide by acquittal of Mr. Kanu by a Nigerian court, in alternative to paragraph 2 above. But for the same reason stated therein, the Parliament may intervene with His Majesty's government, urging it to make binding proposals to the GON to agree to conduct Kano's trial in a mutually agreed neutral third country other than Nigeria and the UK, as was done in the Logberry trial of Libyan nationality, esteemed members of the House of Lords, our decision to lay this petition before you was propelled by the undue levity which, with which His Majesty's government has so far handled this matter. Mr. Khan believes that he has not been accorded the full legal and diplomatic protection he is entitled to as a bona fide British subject. All right, that's what uh, Mazenam de Kano wrote to the House of Lords of United Kingdom. I don't want to go further in explaining, of course, self-explanatory. So I hope that you share and subscribe to the channel. Always support us by dropping your comments and, um, of course, subscribing. Thank you and God bless you all.